Fancy. You see it? You actually, yeah, I do see your screen now. You actually have notes. Yep, I had notes. <laughs> you actually prepared your, you actually did your homework for today. Wow. What is that supposed to mean? Listen, listen, Dirk. How I say things really doesn't really matter. What matters is what you have in those notes. Yes. And in those notes, I have the winning arguments, not like in our last debate. Where apparently at least six of our listeners already agree with you and precisely no one with me. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, hello, everyone. This is Sebastian live, almost live. No, it's actually recorded on todebate.net. And in front of me on my screen, I have my regular co-host who still looks as young as ever. And my co-host is Dirk. So today, uh, we have a, a very easy debate for me, at least, because it's about language yes, and words and, and how we say things. The motion is, if I'm not mistaken, what's your language? How you say things does matter. That's correct. And with a flip of the coin, I will be against that mo- motion. So I will say that it does not matter how you say things. See, you're I'm always... Not gonna watch- you're always so negative. You, had all, you could also have said that I'm going to be for the motion. Anyway, to make it more, even more confusing. So you go first and you're against the motion. The motion was, what's your language? How you say things does matter. Which means you say it does not. Shall we start? <laughs> let's start. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. A few months ago, I was in a car with my sister and my mom and her boyfriend, and I was trying to encourage her to explore what we, how we, what we could do to change humanity and solve big problems of humanity. My sister is actually almost a genius, if not a genius. I'm nothing like her. I'm a hard worker. And I thought that her brain was underutilized, and I tried to get her to think broadly but a bit like Elon Musk trying to tackle big challenges. And she told me, but I don't have the main expertise in anything else that I'm doing, which is in the urban planning and architecture in that area, civil engineering. And I said, well, that's the whole point. Let's come with fresh eyes. If we need to hire doctors, et cetera, then we'll do so. But let's think creatively. Let's brainstorm. And I actually got into a bit of a fight very quickly because I was very cutting and saying, you're not trying like think broadly and it actually upset her and it completely derailed the conversation, which I wanted to get to machine learning, artificial intelligence and how we could solve these big problems to how I was speaking about it. And then my mom came in and said, Sebastian, speak nicer to your sister. It's your sister. But, and, and then her partner chimed in and said, yeah, you know, whatever, this, whatever, just the same thing. And the point is, if within my family, I cannot have a very blunt direct language with whom can I have that language? And it was completely derailing my efforts. So I recognized that how I delivered it was mis- disserving me, but I still maintain that I want to go. I want to cut to the chase. I want to go straight to the point, not sugarcoat things and say, "Oh, you know, you can brainstorm. You don't have to be so humble." No, let's just go straight to the point. If anything, my sister knows me for the past thirty years, so I would have expected her for for her to know me better. And. I, I want people to count on me and count on others for honest feedback, for direct, blunt conversation. Otherwise, there's no line. The red line, just like when we debated about humor, is very difficult to define. Where does it stop? Where does it begin? Where you can say things in a particular way as opposed to another way. If I say Dirk is an ass, it's not very nice. If I say he kicks ass, it's a very nice thing. It's the same word. It's just adding different words around it becomes something funny or interesting. I'm just, my point here is not about the actual word, but that the red line is very, very difficult to define. So no, how you say things really doesn't matter. The action matters, not how you say it. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. You make interesting points. And uh, you settle them and base them on statements like, She should have known me better. She knows me for 30 years. Well, not everyone knows you for 30 years. So that's the starting point of my counter argument, actually. Uh, What is language for? Language is for a couple of things. 
exchange inf of information, to convince people, to form relationships, and to inspire actions. And the last point, I think, is for this debate the most important one. Because in order to inspire actions, you need to bring people on your side. And in order to bring people on your side, you try to form a group. Uh, groups or tribes are formed through common signals. And language is the most pronounced, most important signal we have. So through our language, we form groups as a human species. And groups that identify with something behave in a certain way. If you feel like you're being part of the group of the rappers out there, you hear a certain kind of music, you wear a certain kind of fashion, you behave in a certain way. And that goes for many, many things. And actually, language, the words we choose, the way we choose to deliver our words, have a very measurable impact on how we behave. So the more violent the language, the more likely is violence in action. The more distinctive the language, the fewer people feel included. The sloppier the arguments, the weaker the discussion. And uh, yeah, when it comes down to that, that has been tested and researched multiple times. It does matter what words you pick and how you deliver it. Because not everyone knows you for 30 years. And even those who know you for 30 years may be alienated, frustrated and not following your argument if you choose the wrong words. So, yes, in fact... Watch your language if you want to accomplish something with it. How you say things really does matter. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. If we push your reasoning to the extreme, and the extreme is actually happening right now. If we push your reasoning, it becomes victimization. Everyone gets offended by everything because everyone perceives words in a different subjective fashion. And my perspective here is that it's not worth the effort. Um, I, I have very specific examples, which are maybe too specific to France, for instance. There used to be a comedian 30 years ago, uh, not alive anymore. And I can bet you, actually a couple of comedians, that their jokes about Jews or black people uh, would actually be considered completely inappropriate today. Back then, it was not, because I feel that the free speech aspect was much more liberal than it is today, because people are so sensitive about all the words that we're using. And I'm tired of this. It's not just about political correct correctness, but if we come back to what's happening today, and the reason I say this is, for instance, uh, talking about Islam is becoming con controversial. Talking about how a woman maybe, maybe may look pretty can become very quickly controversial in our Western societies because of the Me Too hashtag and phenomenon. Now, I'm not trying to confuse things. I'm just saying it's become insensitive. It's like a bomb. And I don't want to put the effort into this. We have limited time, limited energy to put into things. And I'm not here to try and adapt to every single individual and their subjectivity, which is involved in their interpretation of words, which I agree with you is a key signal of our interaction with people. I can do that. I can adapt. People can adapt. I'm saying it's not worth it. It does not matter in the grand scheme of things. If we want to have a colony on Mars, I am not going to spend ages and ages trying to convince people and adapt to what they want to hear. I am going to do it. And this is what Elon, Elon Musk is doing. In fact, he's a very poor speaker. If you look on YouTube, he's not a good speaker at all. And does that prevent him from getting media coverage? Does it prevent him from getting fantastic brains to work with him? No. In fact, it actually probably helps him in a way that he has this slight stuttering and he's not great at speaking. So, you know, I've always been tempted to actually redo his videos and show how he should do it because language does matter. Indeed, to convince even more people. You could argue he can convince even more people. I'm just saying it's not worth the effort. He's got better things to do. In fact, you know, I, I was reading a biography of him just lately, and I love his ability to go into the details. Does he need to spend time on learning how to speak better and how he's delivering his message? Or to know the details of aerodynamics, rocket technology, electricity for batteries? I would rather spend the time on that second aspect. In total, that my point is action matter way more than words. And because it's impossible to define this red line, the subjectivity which varies for every single individual, it's really not worth it. And it does not matter in the grand scheme of humanity, of the human species. And I don't say this lightly. 
if we're talking about saving human species from self-destruction or for the fact that the sun will become a uh, will, will start encompassing the planet Earth over the next few billion years, then really language doesn't really matter in how you say things. Let's just get things done. Thank you very much. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear it. Let me address the arguments that you were just making. There were actually a couple of very good points in there, and many of which I agree with, I have to say. Uh, yet, not all of them are useful arguments to make a case against watching a language. So the first thing you said, everyone feels offended these days. Why should I watch my, my language? There is freedom of speech. You're reversing the agency here. So I'm saying you can say whatever you like. Feel free to use the words that come to your mind and cut to the chase. Often there are more than one way to say things and what matters is what result you hope to achieve. Now I would say to come back to Elon's example, he is doing pretty well. So he's actually accomplishing a lot and he's accomplishing that not through action. He's not building those rockets himself. He's accomplishing this through words. So he manages to convince people to give him a ton of money to follow his lead, to follow his vision. And I agree, he doesn't need to be a Polish keynote speaker for that, obviously. But it's not that he went out, built a rocket, and because he built the rocket, he's going to launch uh, the Falcon Heavy to the orbit. He convinced people to do that, and he convinced through words. And probably he was smart in what words he picked. And just as easy, it's possible to lose support of everyone around you if you pick the wrong words. Now, you were saying, uh, you, you were making a difference between words and actions. And this is something where I don't follow you. I do think that words are actions. Um, not to the full extent. I'm with you. Uh, political correctness, which is, by the way, a loaded term anyway, uh, where we can have a discussion what it really means. And people politicize that. But uh, being, let's say, overly watchful of language, and, and that's the crucial part. Uh, demanding that somebody else follows your standard of interpretation, that is in itself a form of power. You try to basically force somebody else to follow your standard. Uh, I, would, I would argue this is, this is a bad use of language and that's not helping. But it is an action nonetheless. If I have enough power to force you to change your wording, that's an action. Uh, even though we use words for that. And so uh, action matters, I agree, uh, but words are just the same thing. This is the reason, by the way, also uh, not going into detail, but this is the reason why, uh, why denying the existence of the Holocaust is a, a punishable act in Germany. Because the statement more or less is, if you deny that the Holocaust ever existed, what you do is the equivalent of violating people that suffered through the Holocaust. And this is why it's punishable. Th again, words. And uh, yeah, this is this is how I want to close my my case here and make another statement for this. Yes, words do matter. They have a very measurable, real effect, and we we are smart uh, when we watch it and when we, we when we choose our words wisely. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. I'm glad you agree with the some and maybe most, if not everything, of what I said. Uh, you didn't say everything. You said some. Uh, Elon Musk, uh, actually, he did not convince people initially. He was laughed at. And there's pretty, a good number of people who don't want him to succeed, a number of lob lobbies and industries. Um, I think it's not how he said it that convinced people. It's that he had skin in the game. He funded things himself initially, and he knew what he was talking about. And it didn't really matter how he said it. He just did it. Action mattered. And he knew the what mattered more than, than the how. In the case of my sister, actually, the interesting um, bit of the story at the end is that I did apologize because she felt offended, and I don't want my sister to be upset at me, and I love my sister, uh, but actually, she came to me privately after the road trip, and she said she would look into the matter because it had rung a bell in her head. So in some way, I did not want to feel, her, make her feel bad, but I felt that the way I delivered my message did actually impact and trigger something. So overall... I don't think how you say things matter. F it. Dirk. Words do have an effect. Words do have an impact. There are studies on this. 
People tried, for instance, things like telling school classes of Asian girls two different signals, giving them two different signals and afterwards perform, measuring their math performance. So one class of uh, Asian girls, they told, hey, Asians are supposed to be superior in math. Let's test it. Here's a math test. The other class heard the message, oh, girls usually perform bad at math. So let's test it. Both classes did the same test. And guess who had the better results in the end? So words do matter. Words do have an effect. Uh, the words you send towards your sister had an effect. You probably picked the right words for your sister. Uh, you would have picked other words with somebody else. And I do think uh, if you tune that to your audience, if you are careful what to say and what not to say, you have a chance to have a bigger impact and a better outcome than the other way around. So words do matter how we deliver things, what we say makes a difference. Thank you very much. So thank you for listening. Um, as usual, it is very easy for you to know what to vote for um, based on our arguments. Um, and if you want to please me, it will be against the motion. So thumbs down. And if you want to please Dirk, and you were convinced rather by his arguments, however shaky and feeble they were, it's thumbs up. Um, and let us know in the comments on the website um, or by email or on Facebook whether you have additional arguments you would have used either way, uh, either side of the motion. Anything I, else to add? Yeah, I have to say this. If... So if the listener, and of course our listeners now go to the webpage, they stream to the webpage, to debate.eu, and they click on the button, then we inspired actions through words, right? Uh, I guess you have, uh, you have a point. We have triggered action. But does it really matter in the end? What? Does it matter to us? It matters a lot. I'm, I can't sleep if I don't get enough votes. Yeah, now go a, and, give, and press the effing button already. Give, give him a pity <laughs> vote. Uh, <laughs> and that will make sure that I uh, buy some, uh, 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 uh. some tranquilizers and uh, sleeping pills um, so that he can sleep a better after that. A pity vote. It's okay. Are, are you trying to say that all the votes that you're having are pity votes? No, no. I'm a strong debater and uh, I have good arguments. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And I'm getting better because I'm debating with the best. So see? Isn't it? See? Isn't it? <laughs> and soon enough, we'll have a special recording. But we're not going to say much about this just yet. Yes. It's coming up soon. Stay tuned. If we have that. Very special episode. I look forward to that. It's going to be a fascinating Whether it's one. Christian Easter, Orthodox Easter, or Christmas, whatever. I can um, tell you. But it's coming up soon. Thank you very much for listening. It was, as Thank usual, you. a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Now you force me to beep something. <laughs> you have to beep it. We're not... Well... Matter. The fun thing about beeping stuff is when you say beep, everybody knows what you said. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
Trump will bring us world peace. Trump and Kim Jong Un. <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh my god. I mean, it... uh, what world we live in now? Uh, you know, about a year ago, you you uh, you suggested we should we should just strike North Korea and wipe it off the earth. And now now we have negotiations. Peace within grasp. You That's know what we should do is to see if there's any impact, all variables set aside, everything else being equal, whether there is a difference in the voting by our listeners, depending on who starts the recording, the episode. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's the one data point that we don't have in our dashboard, right? That, which is why you pointed <laughs> out. <laughs> Let's have just one more metric, right? <laughs> to see, you know, who. You know whose sex, whose sexy voice is influencing the listeners in one way or another. And, and all of a sudden, the two of us are arguing over who is go, who has the pleasure to to welcome the listeners into the episode. Me, we'll have no. to flip, or have I to flip a coin on that as well. Exactly. <laughs> we'll have to flip a coin on everything. <laughs> We could also make up a, a rule like um, whoever goes second is the one making the intro. Because today you're going first, which means yes. you get more time speaking, making the intro, going with your first argument. And I get more time to actually build the rapport with our listeners. Yes. Um, because our yes. listeners have missed us. They sometimes do. Sometimes it takes a little I... bit longer before we're back in their ears. <laughs> supposed to be funny i found it funny it's okay it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> and that's the delayed laughter from the you know, he's getting it it just it just came to his brain or he's just like he has pity he just realizes that no, i'm trying to maybe, make a joke maybe i also uh, i actually found the delivery funnier than the actual joke okay fair enough <laughs> So yes, I am. A, I am a realist. So sometimes I do use the negative um, formulation of things. I'll go on mute. It's 5 p.m. and we have this thing. You know, in the Zurich office. Do you know this? No, we have this every Friday at 5 p.m. Can't believe they're putting this in the meeting room. I could be in a meeting and this thing is like blowing through the speakers. Yeah, maybe maybe you're you're just you're just about to close a multi-million dollar deal. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it should finish in like 10 seconds, but <laughs> unbelievable. This is amazing. I love it. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Come on. Hi. <laughs> Uh, you you know the the TV show Heidi? Uh, uh, I it's an old I, thing, right? I actually old... grew up with that. It's a Japanese anime series. It's oh uh, uh, no, I don't know that. You don't know that? Uh, I was it's a children's TV show. I I I remember that from my childhood, and that was the intro melody. <laughs> 